Today, I'm gonna to be taking a look at whether the WHOOP 3.0 is an accurate heart rate monitor for running. Seven point five nine miles, nine minutes, three seconds per mile, one hundred and forty six beats per minute for my run today on average, or at least that's the number that I got for my heart rate from my Polar OH one armband optical heart rate sensor. Now I also ran with the Whoop three point zero on this run, and it gave me different numbers. Just how different? I'll get into that, but first I want to talk about some disclosures. The Whoop 3.0 is a device that I purchased with my own money, or at least that I'm subscribed to with my own money. And the Polar OH1 is a device that I purchased with my own money as well. Uh, no one's paying me to make this video or to use any of these devices, and no one's gonna get a chance to preview any of my footage or my thoughts before you guys get a chance to see this video on YouTube. Now, the Whoop 3.0 is something that does more than just track your heart rate during a run. It's supposed to be something you wear all the time. So we get a good sense of how your body is doing overall in the grand scheme of things. And you can get then get a sense of how well you're sleeping, how well you're recovering, and also how much work you're putting in. A key component of that, I think pretty much the major only component of that is the heart rate that you're getting from this because basically it's a heart rate monitor. Now, I know that from my prior experience with other running watches that optical heart rate sensors, even this one, the Polar Vantage V2, which is my current daily driver, which is a flagship watch from a company known for its heart rate monitor accuracy, just doesn't cut it for me when it comes to running. When I'm just walking around, sleeping, going through my daily activities during the day, that heart rate is fine, but when it comes to running, nothing on my wrist seems to work. And that's the same thing that happened to me with the Whoop 3.0. When it was calculating how hard I was working during the run based on my heart rate, that number also went into my day strain, which also went into effect on how much sleep I needed, which also affected my percent recovery number. So having that major component of my day off because the heart rate monitor placement was not great for me, really threw off the entire kind of utility of the Whoop 3.0 system. So one of the things that I thought I would do is, I know I, there is a, a, a bicep band that you can move it all the way up higher on your arm, but I didn't want to spend another $30. I probably still will, but there's a little bit more slack on this. So what I decided I would try anyway is to make it basically as long of a uh, band as I can and move it up as high on my arm as I could. So I put it, further up on my forearm, not quite as high as I would for say like this uh, other armband that I like that puts it like right in like the, just further away from like the bend in the elbow. That's a really reliable spot for me in terms of getting heart rate. This isn't quite there. I'd like it to be further up like here. I wish I had like another like inch in this band, but I don't, so I can only get it to here. So I did that for the past couple of days and it looked like I was getting much better results but there isn't a native way to export any of your actual data or your heart rate tracings from the Whoop. So I did a little bit of a workaround. And what I did was I then paired this because there's a thing called broadcast mode and had it paired to my Apple Watch and I ran with that. I picked the Apple Watch because I was listening to audiobooks and podcasts with this anyways and have the Whoop talk to my Apple Watch. And so the way that you wanna do that, and you don't have to just do it to the Apple Watch, you can have this thing broadcast your heart rate to anything like Zwift, Peloton, or any other watches like the uh, Garmin or a Polar or a Apple Watch. And the way you do that is you go into the Whoop app on your phone, hit the menu icon, like the, low, the three like lines in the lower right-hand corner. From there, go to strap settings, and there you'll see a little like toggle on and off for heart rate broadcast, and you'll turn that on. At that point, it's behaving just like a heart rate monitor, like an external heart rate monitor, just like this guy. And so then you just have to pair that external heart rate monitor to your watch. And in this case, I use the Apple Watch. I have an Apple Watch Series 4, and I use the app called iSmooth Run. That's an app that I really like for uh, running 
on the Apple Watch. And the weird like other additional hiccup there that I had to deal with was that like, even though my Whoop was paired to my phone, I had to also pair the Whoop to my phone in the iSmooth Run app. And then I had to wait for like that pairing to push over to the watch. So it kind of it took a while and it didn't seem like it was gonna work at first, but eventually I got it to work and it was detecting my heart rate from the Whoop on my Apple Watch. And I verified this by, in the run, taking off the Apple Watch. So that way it was no longer touching my wrist and there's like holding the watch. I still was able to get a heart rate, which proved to me, that was my test to say that the heart rate is coming from this device and not from the sensors that are on the Apple Watch. And so I was able to get a tracing. And then from that, the iSmooth Run app lets me export my data uh, into a file that I could use to look at the data in an analyzer tool. So I can compare it to the results I got from the Polar OH1. So here are the two tracings that I'm looking down on my laptop here uh, to be able to talk about it. And I'm screen recording it so you guys can see it as I'm talking about it too. So for the most part, it looks like it did a really good job. Other instances where I've kind of looked at the two, the the arm based or the external heart rate monitor does like a pretty consistent job of what I think my heart rate actually is. Whereas what typically happens with anything that's on the wrist is that I get a pretty good reading for like about 20 or 30 minutes. And then after a while, like it just kind of like gets tired or stops working. And then the heart rate just jumps all over the place, but usually stays up like pegged really high. This tracing that I'm looking at just already uh, looks really fantastic. There's a couple of areas that I think that we can drill down on though. Um, the darker color is the Polar OH1, this external heart rate monitor, and the lighter uh, line comes from the Whoop that's over here. So if I zoom in on this section here, this is one area where the, the two gave me very different readings. And so here, like at the worst of it, um, the Polar is giving me 146 beats per minute. And at that same moment, I'm getting uh, 163. So that's a difference of like 17 beats per minute. That's a pretty substantial difference. And it wasn't just a blip. It was kind of off for a while in that section. And that part of the run, I think I may have been running up a hill, but it looks like it was just like a normal part um, of the run. So I, I, there's doesn't really make sense that uh, it would be so off. It's just maybe the position of this, maybe with the sleeve, it just wasn't far enough down where basically, you know, the heart rate monitor just needs to like smush into your skin to get like a really good reading. And I think that up here, I'm just too bony or something. And that's why I never get a heart rate reading. And I think maybe I need to be a little bit further down to get an even better reading. And I think that's where this is coming from. Another section is over here where, uh, again, we're seeing the same thing where the the Polar is giving me, I think, some pretty like normal-ish looking readings, but all the, looking at this tracing up at the top, uh, I'm getting about 10 beats per minute off, uh, kind of at the worst of it uh, in this section as well. So again, not miserably bad, but you know, kind of off for no real reason either. Here's an area though where both of them did really well though. So um, this is a section right here that I'm looking at where I went up a hill and I intentionally kind of picked up the pace just a little bit. It was towards the end of the run on an easy day, so I didn't want to go too crazy about it. So I just picked up the pace a little bit just to make sure I had a very noticeable and quick change in heart rate. And it looks like both of them did a pretty good job of picking it up and they stayed relatively close to each other. Um, or the Whoop stayed close to the Polar OH1, which is, I'm, I'm using that as the reference. I'm considering that to be kind of my control. So I'm pretty impressed with it that I kept up with it right there. But then it also then did this, which I thought was a little bit weird. Again, I'm not sure what's going on. If maybe it's just like rattling a little bit. And so it's picking up just some extra beats somehow, but it's a, it's a pretty unusual way for it to be behaving. So, um, a couple of real little uh, weirdnesses here and there, uh, one or two like bigger problems. But for the most part, I mean, for a run like today that had like, you know, that one little spot of higher intensity, but a, a little bit of a range of, of heart rate intensities as well. Uh, I think the Whoop did pretty good. Overall, it did 147.2 beats per minute for the entire run beginning to end. And the Polar did 146.05, so it, in the big scheme of things, it was less than one and a half beats per minute off. But then again, it was, you know, a, a run that was over 65 minutes long. So there's quite a bit of time for it to kind of like even out. 
So, I mean, I think that the Whoop heart rate monitor, even when running, is pretty good. It would solve things if they just made this band an inch longer, I think, because my arms aren't that big. I got little arms. So I think that would make it a lot easier for me. But overall, I think that that's how I'm going to have to live with this Whoop 3.0 as I continue testing it and seeing uh, how I like the kinds of data and like the analysis and recommendations on that data that it's giving me. But at least now I have a baseline going forward in knowing that the heart rate data that I'm getting from it is not as good, at least in the way that I'm using it now, as what I'm normally used to from my other normal devices. But it's pretty good. It's good enough, I think, to be able to live with it this way, to kind of test it, to see how it does at incorporating those numbers into my day strain, my sleep requirements, and my recovery. So that's kind of the, the game plan going forward. Let me know if you have any other questions about the WHOOP and the heart rate accuracy in the comments down below. Or better yet, I do a live stream every day on YouTube. Feel free to come by 3 p.m. Central Time every day and ask me a question there. That's all I have for today, everybody. Thanks so much for making it all the way to the end of the video. Hopefully you guys are staying safe out there on your runs and I'll see you in the next one. Yo, what's going on?